Good morning, maniacs. In today's video, we're going to be showing you how we install these metal things to make sure that we keep the general structure of the door. And we're going to do all of this without welding. We're going to make sure that the door is still open and closed like the regular bus doors do. So, let's get to it. Previously on Gus the Struggle Bus. We ordered a crap ton of stuff because um, there's a little, little things here and there that we want to get taken care of. <laughs> So our next project for today, just checking them off the list, is to black out these windows. Our front door is our last door that we don't have waterproof and lockable. But our idea is to leave the door as its original shape, its original function, opening two-sided, and to try to rehook up that air system so we can also have the automatic opening door, you know, just to leave that part as original as possible because we really love that about it. First thing we did is we removed these gaskets. They just slide right off. Um, we had to take out a couple of screws, but they slide off because they're in this little track system. And once you take both of these off and you shut the doors, there's like almost a two and a half or two and one fourth gap in between the doors. So that's a problem. <laughs> and then they open, not at the exact same time, they open one at a time and they overlap. So what our idea is, we're going to mimic the shape of the gaskets and try to replace it with this one by one square pole I'm sure Paco knows the correct terms. And then this two inch flat iron. So we're going to attach this to the door and then attach this to the side of it, mimicking this gasket shape that it already has. These one inches on both sides of the square poles will close up that gap. And then the flat irons will have it overlap like the original form. Hold up. We have been trying really hard to work on this bus in a way that is relatable to your average Joe that's working on the bus somewhere else in the world and hoping that as we learn, you're learning, as we make mistakes, we help you avoid those mistakes or you see things we're doing wrong and go, okay, don't do it that way. Now we know how to do it. So hopefully our videos help you and it teaches you how to work on your bus in how to work on your bus with limited materials or limited knowledge because that's what we're doing and we want to help somebody else out there maybe who's in the same position. How we're going to do that without welding is we're going to use rivets. We had to special order these from Amazon because your average hardware store didn't have long enough rivets. It is going to have to go through this uh, one inch pipe as well as the one inch pipe that the door is originally made out of. The first step that we're going to take uh, to make sure that we go ahead and start this off right is of course taking off the gasket. Next thing we're going to do is pair and pre-drill. So we're going to pre-drill all the screws or the places where we're going to be putting um, rivets. Why 
car door is a little bit more difficult to turn into an actual front door for the bus than other people is one because we want to keep it as original as possible and most people will take one off attach it and make it one solid door which looks awesome and it functions more like a front door and it might just be more functional altogether the other part of it is most people will have thicker metal in the center so there'll be room for an actual lock to go through or some sort of locking system to be put on here and ours just is a whole lot more thinner over here it looks like it's you know a little over an inch thick but if you look at this side of it it's even thinner on this side it uh it's like exactly one of the one by ones that we're using so we have literally no room to put a lock or anywhere to put it so that is one reason why we have come up with this very unique <laughs> way to make it into a door and we're just really hoping that it will work there is just enough room in between the two bars leaving room for the heads of the rivet but i've also alternated the holes on pretty much everything so none of the rivets run into each other from the uh flat iron piece and the heads don't run into each other whenever we shut the door. The next thing we are going to do is sand the front door because once we get everything mounted the Bondo needs pure metal to actually bond to and the door is already painted. We're gonna sand it before we put anything up there. grinding both doors on both sides so this is what it looked like that little matte black there and then he grinded this down and then on the inside we have a little bit more of like a shiny glossy coat and then he sanded that down as well so now we're gonna pre-drill the rest of our bars and then attach them drilled the holes and made sure the rivets, the extra long rivets, could go all the way through the door that we need to. Then we took it back down and we're going to pre-drill and rivet actually attaching the flat piece to the one by one before we put it up there so we don't have to try to do it once it's up there and mess anything up. looks like is pretty much like the gasket used to look like it's gonna have a flap on one side it's gonna have a big part that's gonna basically fill that gap that comes when you close those doors and like we said we're gonna go ahead and attach it with rivets so let's go ahead and do this now I'm so excited we're gonna have a real door <laughs> extremely sturdy and it's not it literally is not going anywhere but we did once we got it up there come across an issue that we didn't calculate into the scenario so the top of the door the one by ones finish at the top of the door and then at the front of it there's like a little ledge that goes a little bit higher that ledge is the one that when the door closes pushes against the top gasket we did not put the 
flat iron all the way to the top, even with that ledge up there. So now when you close it, one, there's not a spot for that flat new flat iron to push against the gasket, and two, there's a big gap up there where there's literally, you can like go inside and see through it. So, let's try this again. Now we're back in business. You can see down here, it's not even anymore. We moved it up that much, and that makes it stick up that much and go even with where that gasket closes. So now we're gonna go work, go ahead and work on filling in this little gap right here. We got a little gap right here. So we gotta cut a piece for this area over here, and then we gotta cut a piece for this area over here. <laughs> So it is the next day. We finished off that night on a productive note. We finished attaching this one by one to this door and filling the gap all the way down here. So it goes all the way down. And then, like we said, we moved this flat iron up like we needed to. And then we filled the gap down here so it goes all the way down. Now, what we're working on now is we said we were going to do the exact same thing except opposite on this other door but what we decided to do is cut the flat iron that we have that's six feet in half and do three feet up here and three feet down here leaving a gap for the lock to go She's ready. So if you're not familiar with Bondo, it's pretty intense stuff. It's used to patch holes um, and seal up pretty serious cracks on things like cars and stuff. So it comes in this type of clay paste in the canister, like a paint can, and then you have this little tube of hardener, and you have to mix them together at the perfect ratio, which will be on the directions. And then quickly, after you mix it together, uh, spread it and smooth it out wherever you want it to be because it hardens really quickly. After you do a layer of it, you let it dry, then you sand it down, and then another layer, sand it down until you get the shape and the smoothness that you want. Um, if you recall, if you've been watching or if you haven't, we use this stuff to close up the holes that our stop sign made when we took it off. Other holes we closed up in different ways, but the holes that it left were, I mean, they were huge. So we use this stuff to close up those holes and it's been working fantastically. Another thing about it is after you finish, you have to paint over it to protect it because it does absorb, absorb moisture. So it's a little bit stressful of stuff to work with because you do have to move quickly, but it is great stuff and works. Well. Wonders. So now that the Gabondo has hardened a little bit, we're going to go ahead and sand it down to try to smooth it out, make it look uh, even with the other piece of metal.
All right, so now we have everything around the door taped up so that whenever we paint the door, nothing other than the, than the actual door gets painted. We're going to prime it right now because it's getting late. So we're gonna prime all the whole door. We sand it everything down with at least 220 just so the actual paint or primer can um, kind of attach to it. Um, and right now, I just kind of hope that we have enough uh, enough cans of paint. We have two cans. Hopefully, that should be enough. We'll see. 